Ah, I'm making a video. Here's a response video to anti-bullshit man. Um, except it's not really him, it's his blog. Um, and, um, his video, anti-BS man. So, okay, anyway. Um, yeah, so he did a video, so I'll respond to something. I don't know, so anyway, he point, pointed to the blog, so I did read this, this, this thing. Um, much, much, much words and such. Lots of jibber jabber and, you know, hinkle, pinkle, stinkle, dinkle in there. Um, lots of words. Wordified all over the place. Um, so yeah, I don't really, I don't have to concede, I don't really get it. I sort of glazed over a little. Um, yeah, I think it has something to do with nihilists. Yeah. And, um, yeah, that's it. Um, and you know this whole idea of how you value, you know how you make do this this negative utilitarian thing, which he concedes he is. So we sort of agree on that one anyway, mostly. Um, but yeah, the, the value equation is really difficult to do. We we know for certainty certain parts of the value equation. We know for certainty that you know getting an ice cream cone at Friendly's is not worth running a kid over in the street in a horrible manner where he suffers and bleeds out and screams and yells in pain. But those two things, yeah, okay, okay, we can figure that out. No way is that worth it. Um, the more complex question is, is how much is an hour's worth of suffering from somebody just writhing and tormented in mental anguish of the worst possible fear and all, all the, you know, the real insidious deep into your nerve kind of horrors. Um, how much of a, an hour's worth of that is that worth? Is it worth two broken legs? Is it, you know, it's really hard to draw those equations up and to figure out, you know, how do you, you know, how do you scale them? Um, especially when they're imposed on somebody who doesn't want them, who didn't volunteer to play the game. You know, when somebody breaks their leg playing basketball and they volunteer to play basketball, we say, well, okay, that's part of the risk of playing basketball. You run, you trip, you break your leg, blah, blah, blah. But if they were just a bystander walking down the sidewalk and somebody threw the basketball and hit him and they knocked him down, they broke their leg, that's a different kind of broken leg because now you've imposed it on somebody. Okay, they didn't volunteer to play basketball. They didn't volunteer to assign any risk onto themselves. So um, their pain is completely obnoxious to their purpose in life. It's not part of the price there. They stated a willingness to pay kind of thing. And we should, rationally, it's just sensible that you'd be able to make these rational contracts. Um, so, uh, yeah, the basic game of life is broken in the sense that broken from a, a rational, intelligent, um, civilized way of conducting business. Civilized people don't conduct vi business where there's catches and, you know, where something you know, there's a snake in your box of cookies. You don't open a box of cookies and a snake pops out. You know, no, that's not, no. We have contracts say, no, no snakes in your cookies. That's so you can expect to have no snakes in your cookies. That's a reasonable expectation. But you don't get that with life, all right? Because life does this thing where you can't get consent. You know, you can have the, the cookies shoved in your face and there can be snakes in the box of cookies. Fuck that. It's bad enough they're forcing you to buy the cookies, and then they shove snakes in the cookies. What the fuck? That ain't, that ain't a deal. I didn't sign up for no snakes in my cookies. But anyway, I digress. Um, so anyway, um, it seems anti-bullshit man is making some sort of... Well, first it's one of these arguments like, even if somebody's on your side for the wrong reason, it's okay because they're on your side. And I suppose that's okay when you're in the middle of the Civil War, right? You really don't care that if somebody's fighting on the Civil War because, not because they want to free the slaves, but because they want to go down to the South and steal all their stuff. <laughs> you know, yeah, all right, you got the same purpose. You all want to get down to the South and, and, and stop these bad people from doing this bad stuff. But yeah, I mean, this sort of sucks that this guy just wants to do it because he wants to steal stuff. Um, but yeah, maybe you can use him. Maybe you could be a good bullet catcher. And uh, so, yeah, you'll use his, his service in attaining your goal. All right, there's a practicality of that. I'm not denying it. I'm just saying I'm not too happy about it. Um, so, yeah, I'm not going to be thrilled if there's anti-natalists or just anti-natalists because they hate human beings. That's just stupid. <laughs> I mean, goddamn. 
um, human be beings are as much a victim of the circumstance as anything else is. Uh, and getting rid of human beings doesn't do anything to fix anything real on this planet. I mean, what, the only real suffering is silly human on human suffering? I mean, come on. I mean, that's just, that's too silly a fucking goddamn philosophy. So, yeah, maybe they're on my side, but they're on my side for a stupid, idiotic reason. And as soon as the war's over, I'm kicking them the fuck out of the car because they're idiots. They're fucking jerks and morons. Um, you know. So I don't know where to go with that. I mean, I, I don't know how to concede to your point um, completely because I just can't do it completely. It's not the same thing. I mean, it's just not. I mean, if you're doing the right thing for the wrong reasons, it's still the right thing, but it's still the wrong fucking reasons. And they're, they usually reveal themselves as important. Reasons usually show up at some point and say, here I am, I'm the reason we're doing this. And that's sort of important in the end game. So I guess I would argue that, yeah, they might be useful in the short term, but in the long term, they're going to be a liability. So always be ready to put a bullet in their head because they're going to be a problem sooner or later. So, yes, use the retards to fight the war. But as soon as the war has any hope of being over, shoot them in the back of the head. Or something like that. Anyway, so the other part of his argument, I think, sort of relates to this whole knowing of stuff. And this idea of subjectivism, and um, yeah, well, fuck all that. I just I don't buy any of that crap. If you don't, if you're not arguing what you you know, then don't bother arguing. <laughs> I mean, just do it really meekly. Like, I sort of think that maybe possibly blah 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 blah. But if you don't know, then just yeah, just a little be a little make little meek suggestions. I don't know. I'm I'm I don't know. I don't quite. Oh, I, uh, you know. But, but, yeah, don't make fucking statements and arguments and defenses unless you're pretty goddamn sure you're right because all this shit's pretty fucking important. Um, so I'm going to say something like, uh, unless you knows, <laughs> you have to knows to impose. Yeah, there, that's a good title. You have to knows to impose. So if you're going to impose life or have kids, and you better goddamn know it's the right thing to do. That goddamn it's going to work out for the best. That goddamn it's sure a goddamn thing. It's a great goddamn idea. And if you're going to argue against somebody else having a kid, then you got to goddamn know it's fundamentally evil. That fundamentally in the long term we lose by playing a game like that. That this is what the universe is made out of. It's made out of goddamn stupid, ignorant, dumb matter. That this whole replicating thing is just goddamn bullshit. It's a goddamn accident of fucking chemical circumstance. Doesn't mean a goddamn thing. And we're just built to be goddamn machines that consume shit, eat shit, shit shit, okay, and talk shit. That we're just fucking shitters. We're goddamn shit processors. That's all we fucking are. And that's a goddamn fail right on its face. So why the fuck... You know, I, yeah, and I know this shit. I don't just think this shit. Oh, well, maybe possibly. No, I know it. I know it to the core of my God. I know it to the, the interior of my nuts. Every fucking little blood vessel and convolution. I know every detail of it. I mean, it's, it's all the way inside of me that I know this. It's written on every goddamn bit of flesh inside of me. If I could turn myself inside out, it's written on every goddamn corner of me. That goddamn, this is the truth about how this fucking universe works. That this goddamn experiment is just that, just bullshit. It's just a fucking chemical experiment started by a goddamn ignorant, stupid universe. It's a goddamn fart of the goddamn universe. That's all we fucking are. We're fart. Okay? We're not good. We're just fucking excess gas. We're just a goddamn thing that took place. We're a goddamn infestation. Infestation infestation on the surface of a goddamn globe of matter in a goddamn cold, brutal, radioactive goddamn universe. And that's it. All right? We're just scuzz. We're just shit. Talking shit. Period. Um, and I know it. Okay? It's not like, oh, yeah, I'm not quite sure about, oh, it may be possible. No. No. No, there's no fucking God, there's no fucking purpose, there's no fucking anything here. There's a replicating molecule, there's four billion years of evolution that designed us. That gave us tools to beat the shit out of each other so we could steal all the energy, so we could say I win in the end and be an arrogant asshole. And that's all there is. That's it, there's nothing. What the fuck is that? It's my neighbor, but his truck looks different. Anyway, it looks bigger. 
scarier. <laughs> yeah, it gave me a little scare. Anyway, um, come and run at me. Um, so yeah, so that's it. You know, so yeah, no, if you're going to talk stuff, talk it because you know it. And not because you just, if, and if you just think it, just be more timid than, okay, don't be such arrogant assholes. If you think, if you know having kids is right, then go ahead and make arguments defending having kids. But until you know it, you ought to just shut the fuck up. Because you're just talking shit. You're just talking out of your ass. Okay? You're not making arguments. Well, I'm not talking about anti bullshit I'm just talking all these anti nailers So that's the other thing he says. We shouldn't argue with these assholes. What the fuck do you mean? We should argue with each other somehow. That Somehow that makes more sense. Well, hey, let's argue with the nihilist anti natalist Let's have arguments about anti-natalism inside of anti-natalism about whether assholes should be anti natalists because they hate humans or whether people should be anti natalists because they hate fucking goddamn sentient creatures being put in jeopardy for no goddamn great reason. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Without any goddamn consent forms. That's bullshit. Um, so anyway. Alright, so that's probably, I probably got to enough of that. Right? I probably got to, to, to some of the stuff in here. Pretty sure. I referenced some of it. So anyway, let's do some of this uh, Quinta guy stuff, because it's, he's so fucking annoying. But, you know, anti bullshit man would say, Don't bother arguing with this motherfucker, because he's too damn stupid. Well, I know, but, <laughs> you know, the, the, the people make these arguments, and other people think they're good arguments. And so you have to tear them down once in a while, because people buy into this bullshit. They buy these lies. And that's all they are, is lies. And so in one video, he was arguing that we can't use the Frankenstein analogy because the author of the Frankenstein novel was a tree-hugging nature lover and she was really writing a metaphor about how we should all love nature and not cross it and not do anything against nature. Which was a pile of shit anyway. She was writing a novel, asshole. <laughs> you know, uh, based on an interesting theme. But you have any direct quotes from her stating her nature lovery? Um... But even if I conceded the point, it doesn't matter. I've used the Frankenstein analogy where I've completely changed it, okay? I mean, we've analogized that Frank, Dr. Frankenstein's actually being successful. That 7 out of 10 of his little creations go out the front door in pink dresses with little pink balloons saying, I like life, I like life, I want to fuck some things over, I want to eat some pig meat. Okay, and they're all happy, happy little pig eaters. Okay? And what we're arguing about is the three that go out the back door, okay, with all kinds of liabilities and say, how the fuck did I get stuck in this fucking pigsty? Uh, yeah, so I've already changed the metaphor, you fucking douchebag. So this idea that I can't use Frankenstein unless I go, I go to the author of the original story and get their approval is just bullshit. I can use Shakespeare, I can use lots of other stories as metaphors, and I can use them to my purposes. I can use the three pig story not just to explain how, well, it's good to be you know, thinking about the long term and build your little house out of bricks instead of building your house out of short term straw. Or there could be another metaphor there, which is if you don't like your brother, tell him to make a house out of straw. <laughs> so he'll get eaten by a wolf. Uh, whatever. There could be lots of stories in there. So fuck you telling me what I can and cannot do with Frankenstein. And goddamn, every version of Frankenstein out there is dark as goddamn dark can be. None of them are happy ending, la la la, good stories. They all suck. I don't want to be a, I don't want to be Frankenstein. I don't want to be Doctor Frankenstein. I don't want to be the peasants living in fucking tra uh, Frankenstein and Tonia either. They live in a shithole in the first place, and nobody wins in any of them stories anyway. Even the De Niro version of Frankenstein. What happens in the end? They go live in an ice cave. Nobody wins, idiot. <laughs> Jesus, you stupid fuck. Where, where's the, the beautiful d d description of nature or, or humanity or anything in any of those stories? There's no fucking... The humans suck, animals suck, nature sucks. It all fucking sucks. It's just a big pile of goddamn suck, you retard. So anyway, let's just play some of this shit. It really is pissing me off. Many anti-natalists. Fucking douchebag. Base their belief in anti-natalism. And blah, 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 blah. Their ideology. Yeah, so he's saying this, right? These are his um, accusations about what forms an anti-natalist. Fucking lion cunt. Of anti-natalism. 
and uh, just yeah, well, many um, pro-natalists um, don't really want to have kids. They want to molest kids. They look like child molesters because they are child molesters. They just want to play with their little willies and little vaginas because they can't, uh, you know, children forget and they really don't know what's going on so they can get this free molestation time in. So they're not having kids because they want children or because they want to grow up a new adult. They just want to molest something. And that's why they look like molesters. Religious, their religious expectations. Yeah, so religious expectations. Again, so this has something to do with religious expectations. So if if assassin beetles or bugs were the first organism to gain uh, high intelligence and they said to themselves, ooh, this is disgusting, <laughs> you know, this whole idea of sticking a provophis in there and sucking guts out and shit to it, now we got to find out some other way to feed ourselves. Let's make a porridge that we can suck to us, to our, to us, uh, provophis, <laughs> right? They, they would, they, because they would rationally say what we're doing is wrong that we shouldn't torture other animals, that we can gain our food some other way. Somehow now they're religious. That means that assassin beagles are religious. As soon as anything finds anything critical about doing anything the natural way, all of a sudden now you have a religion. I mean, what a fucking asshole thing to say. Again, so if I just slander all of you fucking natalist pedophiles, all right, now just call you pedophile. You're going to call me religious, I'll call you a pedophile, you motherfucking cunt. You look like one, you sound like one, you talk like one, you probably smell like one. Of what reality should be, as opposed to what reality is. Right, you can't deal with the reality. You have a little tiny wiener and you can't get any, so, uh, you know, you probably, these glasses represent your blind wife. Um, and so, uh, yeah, you, you wanted to have children so you could molest it. That's why you had children, so you can molest them. Now, a lot of uh, anti-natalists express... Uh, a, a lot of pro-natalists are just looking to lick the asses. They would especially like little young asses when the little, you know, kind of... Um, viscousy brown pooey comes out you know just that kind of clear and translucent poo they like to lick up the poo from the babies Ooh, the pedophiles like that yum 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 express uh, deep um d depression deep uh, disappointment look at this fucker i mean yeah if i w if i was you i would be really depressed and disappointed that's for sure no doubt goddamn about it over the fact that life is entirely and completely fucking ignorant and stupid. That's right. That the game is stupid. That we're playing a motherfucking game that has no intelligent elegance built into it. That it's all brass knuckles and good fortune and bad luck and bullshit that runs the whole fucking thing. And idiots like you just say, yeah, let's play hopscotch to the death. And some rational people say, why do we want to do that? And you say, well, because there's little baby wheelies on the other side. <laughs> fuck you, you creepy motherfucker. Just shut the fuck up, you slandering lion cunt. I mean, really. Uh, Many of the things they were told as children um, simply are not true. They find are not true. As they get old. Ugh, this whole crock of shit. So, so again, so, so well, anyway, he's going to slander uh, my misery guy, Jay Sounder guy, and all the rest of this. Um, uh, yeah, of course, there are, there are fables and stories that they lie to children to give children some sense that everything's going to be okay. And now we know that those are all lies, all of them. Not just God's stories, but all of the fairy tales, asshole. That's right. So you make a fake world where there's justice and honor and integrity, where people win for the right reason. So you create a bunch of lie stories where Cinderella wins in the end kind of bullshit, where the underdog is victorious, just to give children this fake notion that somehow if you do the right thing, you play by the rules, and you blah, 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 you're not going to get cancer when you're 23 years old and die. And it's just a lie. You can't bargain with nature. You can't make a fair deal. Okay? You, there is no um, honor for honor exchanges here. 
All right, nature is a backstabbing motherfucking cunt, okay? The game is dirt, dumb, stupid, and only pedophile lunatics would play it. So let's go forward a little bit. I mean, he starts ragging because I made, I made some reference to when I was a kid and one experience in my whole life of experiences that was kind of telling for me the death of my pet lizard when I was a kid. And the point of the story is, is that who killed the lizard? That's right, my next door neighbor. So your argument is still bullshit. That's qu I was quite aware at a young age that human beings have completely different sensibilities than my own. That here I am saying, oh, this is a living creature. This is an interesting living creature, my friend. And some asshole living next door thinks it's a goddamn bug and needs to be swatted. All right, so I was quite aware that human beings have very different definitions of what's valuable in the world, the jackass. Gee, you're just such a fucking lying cunt. They were eight years old, and many of them have uh, seen pets die, or have had pets die. And when a child is younger, the parents will uh, uh, sometimes ameliorate the issue or right, they'll lie. They'll, so soon as they ameliorate, the, no, they'll lie to their kids to create a false delusion that everything is okay when really, in fact, it's not okay. Okay, their animal basically got run over by a car. It bled out on the street. It yelped, 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 dead, blah, 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 uh, and died. Okay, and it's dead. It's gone forever. It lived for nothing. It just got used up and it just got squished because some asshole was rushing to the store to get the last box of Twinkies. I mean, fuck you. Life is stupid. You want to play it? You play it, asshole. But play it with your goddamn self. Quit imposing it on goddamn victims of your fucking goddamn perverted uh, genetic experiments, you motherfucking jackass. Look at this. <laughs> Mommy didn't tell me about that. <laughs>